today on Sailing Joy. So here's the situation. The next day, you guys saw that boat that poorly anchored in front of us. And I decided to analyze the images Patricia had done with her mobile phone to better understand what happened and why that sailboat decided to leave in the middle of the storm. And this is what I found. An error in anchoring too close to other boats right before the thunderstorm associated with the not so long scope for the anchor made the sailboat drag anchor as soon as the wind picked up. That's when the captain of that sailboat panicked and he realized he had to let out a more chain. And doing so, floated dangerously close to us, dangling his anchor and chain on ours. couldn't get out in the middle of the uh, thunderstorm, so he dropped anchor chain, everything. So it's all tangled on ours, but I got an ear infection. So our friends from Okolo staff is coming here to help me out, just to dive in, untangle from our chain and recuperate the, the chain and anchor that they left here. We don't want to leave in the bottom of uh, the ocean because it may really uh, get on other anchors and create a huge problem. So we're gonna be doing that right now. It was like really, really bad. Really? And then today got better. So, uh, I know it's Off we went to retrieve the chain and anchor. Here you can clearly see the chain that was left by the sailboat to the bottom left of the screen. I believe there was about 20 or 30 meters of chain at the bottom of the sea. We brought it all up to the dinghy and then transferred it into Joy. That's crazy. Unbelievable. And then they park in front of you with a rope like this. Exactly. So here's the result. We got the anchor from that responsible boater that threw the anchor so close to us right before the thunderstorm. The entire anchor, chain, rope, everything was tangled on ours. And uh, whenever we had 40 knots, the guy simply decided to leave and got everything just like yanked from his boat. He left, never came back. But I went to check because we're gonna have some more wind coming up this afternoon. And guess what, everything was there. I didn't notice that he left without an anchor. I thought he just raised anchor and left. So. We're glad uh, that we went to check, so it's, uh, it's, it's lessons learned. You have to check every day, even though you check whenever you throw anchor, check again after a storm to see if anything happened over there. The good part is that our anchor is totally in the sand and it's looking good. So even if we have like 50 knots of wind, we're not gonna go anywhere. It's very, very safe dug into the sand. So this is what we got here. Maybe our dinghy got a, like a stronger anchor now to, uh, to have uh, on board, so. Hoje, a Arome falou que vai ter um ventinho considerável de 23, 24 nós. I felt like Patricia got a bit traumatized from last tour and was now studying everything that she could about the weather forecast. And back in 2015, this anchorage, which is called Pula here in Sardinia, was my first anchorage ever. 
At that time, I looked for a uh, place that I could go and learn how to sail. So I went aboard Sail Ipanema that I told you guys before in previous videos. And this was the first anchorage ever that we stopped. And it's so funny, seven years later, uh, we're coming back here, me and Patricia, and uh, we're looking at this same anchorage with totally different eyes on our boat, or our Lagoon 46. And uh, so glad to be able to accomplish uh, this dream to come back here on our own boat. And now we're gonna be going to Cala Zafferano, which is a military zone that you're not supposed to actually spend the night there and everything. But we are in Italy and a lot of people do go there. So I've been there in 2015. It was like the, probably the most beautiful water in terms of transparency uh, that I had seen in my life. So uh, let's check it out and see how it is. And hopefully we're not gonna be kicked out. And what we thought could happen, it did happen. The Italian Navy arrived and kicked everyone out of the anchorage. We followed the locals, raised our anchor and raced to the anchorage next door in order to avoid a citation. We were pretty lucky to get the last spot on the anchorage as we knew that late afternoon the wind speed would increase and we would need a safe place to spend the night. there's too much wind or there's no wind. So for the past two days, we had a wind that is called Mistral, which comes from the north, west. I know it can be quite confusing, the name of all types of winds we have around here. So here it is, Ed, so you don't get confused anymore in the future. Yeah, it comes from the northwest, and it comes from the Alps. It's like a, a wind that is very strong. It makes it everything very dry. It blows all of the clouds away, so the day is very beautiful, but there's a lot of wind. And today we had gusts of about 30, 35 knots here on Anchorage, and now we had to stay put. So we decided to stay here on Anchorage and, uh, and just like let it pass. Tomorrow it's gonna be much better and we'll go to our next Anchorage. So is the anchor secure? We're yes, okay? Yes, We're yes. not gonna go anywhere? Very good. Rockinar. <laughs> and so you guys understand, whenever she says Rockinar, that's the Rockna, because we do put nicknames on everything that we have here. So the Jennifer is Jennifer, Rockna is Rockner, and, uh, and so on. I'll tell you more about it later on. <laughs>
And during days like this, you cannot actually see the beauty of the place. It looks like every place that we go that there's no wind, no swell, ends up to be like the most beautiful place in the world. So we're re starting to realize that the wind plays a very important role into it. So let's see tomorrow morning because I think there's not going to be much wind. I'm going to fly the drone and see if this is much beautiful without wind than it is with wind. that we were at here on the east coast of uh, Sardinia to go to Cagliari which is the big city here the reason for that is because we want of course visit Cagliari but second we want to do the 250 hours schedule maintenance on the engines so we're gonna be hiring a local dealer which is authorized Yamar so they can change oil filter and they can go through the entire list of maintenance that is needed uh, for the Yamar engines uh, we're planning to uh, even change uh, all of the other filters that Yarmar recommends that uh, some people don't change it uh, but uh, we want to do it we want to make sure that a joy is uh, always uh, hundred percent and we don't have any issues in the middle of the ocean so it's a nice day we're motoring uh, we're gonna be arriving in Cagliari in a little bit and we're planning to stay there for two nights Are you hot? How many degrees do you think it is here? 50 degrees. All right. And we're doing the 250 hours engine check, which includes the oil change, the filter, and uh, we're going to do the pre-filters. Uh, we're going to check the tension of the belt and all of the bolts that we have over there in the engine to make sure everything is okay and joy continues on going for many 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 nautical miles without any issues uh on uh, both of the engines so this is taking probably the entire morning to change the oil and everything else that i had mentioned uh, we have chosen not to do it ourselves this time i'll probably do it in the next 250 hours uh, later on but I wanted to have like a Yamar authorized service dealer to come in it's a little bit more expensive than doing it yourself but I wanted to make sure everything uh, was checked uh, properly and not that I would not do it but I think uh, a specialized technician is always great to have it on board to make sure that everything's okay and uh, the engine continues uh, to go on I got uh, a 10 for cleanness on the engine area and everything else i check regularly everything inside of uh, uh where the engine is located uh, you know i really like to see a very clean engine compartment because if anything happens uh, we know exactly what happened because it's all it's very white and grainish inside so uh, if uh, oil spills or if it's water or anything and you have it very clean you know it right away what is going on so we're gonna complete the service uh, this now so we can go enjoy a little bit uh, Cagliari and get to see here the city which is beautiful we went out last night had dinner and uh, we're having a great time uh, being here in Cagliari yes and after five and a half hours we're done with the fire the first engine it's really taking a long time to change an oil and uh, filters here in uh, Italy in Cagliari and uh, I'm glad I don't pay by the hour but anyhow <laughs> the technician will start the port side uh, engine uh, I don't know maybe after lunch and that let's see how long he's gonna take for the second engine to be completed so we just uh, finalizing here the oil change and what we have discovered here is that on the fuel there was some impurities and uh, we're just checking it out to see and uh, what is it because uh, the pre-filter 
just filter some little things, little spot. It did its work, so it's very good. So now we're having a look to see what it is. This is the diesel the technician uh, brought in. And this is the diesel that we had here at Joy. So we're changing all the diesel now because it looks like the diesel that we had had some impurities on it. So we want to make sure that we have the best possible diesel here uh, on the engine. So it is uh, it's a shame that, uh, you know, you have to watch out every time that you put diesel on your vessel. You have to make sure that you look uh, and test what you're putting in in order to avoid issues uh, in the future. So this was a, a big lesson that we have learned today from uh, Franco, the, the, the technician that came here on board. In the future, what we're going to do is we'll probably get about 20 liters, wait for a little bit, see if anything goes down on the reservoir that we put the, gas, the diesel in. And if there's anything, if it's not good, we'll just like go to the next gas station and get something with quality. We're almost done. It's almost eight o'clock, so it's time to go have dinner and say goodbye to our technician and pay the bill. Next on Sailing Joy. Has been a pretty good passage so far, about three hours into it. I think, uh, you know, it's gonna be a, a, another day and we're gonna be in Trapani in uh, Sicily. In the middle of the crossing yesterday, we started to smell a weird smell inside of uh, Joy. But the smell started to get worse and worse. I started to go all around Joy to see if I could find something. And whenever I enter the starboard side engine, 